In this particular session, we will discuss about Android application components. So let's get started. So let's go with our new project. We will create a project for our phone or the tablet part with the basic empty activity. So let's go with next. Let's name your application as new application project part. I'm going to use Java as my language and my files or my all the code will be stored on this particular location. I'm going to use minimum SDK as 5.0 which is lollipop so that my 98% devices around the globe who can run my application and let's go with finish just let it finish in the meantime let's go with these main files and folders so under your application if i go with the basic structure for the apk file so apk file was just an archive right the apk that we installed in our application in our mobile phone that apk was just an archive file like the zip file we got there right like zip apk is just an again compressed archive of different multiple files and folders and this particular compressed archive contains your multiple folders one of them was your manifest under this manifest folder we got a single file with the name android manifest.xml this android manifest.xml file contains the basic declaration of all of your components right i will discuss what are the components there but all the basic declarations were always available under your android manifest.xml file after this basic declaration under manifest file we got this java folder this java folder contain all of your source code like your native code and your java or the kotlin code as well so all the code will be compiled and stored into a file with the name dex dot dex file right in short we call it dex the complete name was dalvik executable actually if i go with the basic structure how an dalvik executable file has been created so for that part let's say we have written our code in java right when we compile our java program with the jdk this will give us a dot class file that was again the byte code format we call it we got the dot class file but this dot class file is compatible for all of your cpu all of your like laptops and your you can say highly powered devices but if i talk about android devices they were low powered devices like they have some limited memory they have limited power backups out there so we cannot directly execute dot class file on those android devices so to resolve this issue we simply encode this dot class file into dot dex file so we can easily execute this dot class file on low powered devices as well this was just the extension we call it dot dex let's say your java file you got something like abcd dot class you simply encode it and at the end you will got abcd dot dex file this dex file can be executed or can be run on any of the android device around the globe but at the first execution of the application android always optimize that application and create dot dex file into dot odex file which is device specific this is just the optimized code for your specific device right and this odex file is always device specific you cannot execute one odex file into all the android devices but this is always device specific but you can execute you can run dot dex file into any android device right so your apk file is just an archive and that particular archive contains your dot dex java code you can say plus it contains your android manifest file which contains your main declaration other than this declaration part we also contain some resources like your pdfs were there your backgrounds were there your icons were there your variables were there other different resources were also there all these resources were available under your res folder like your drawables if you include any image if you include any background part if you include any foreground part right if you include any icon part that also things not the icon part only the background and the foreground or the image or the pdf or the video or the audio these kind of things were generally uploaded into your drawable folder 
after uploading all those files into a drawable then you can use them or then you can call them inside your application after that part after this drawable folder we got the basic layout folder which contains the xml file like what will be the location of all those buttons and other different view elements right if i go with simple design part only or let's go with uh, design only so here you can see we got a simple text button here right the particular layout like the alignment or the all other things will be stored into this activity underscore main dot xml file format this xml file is only for this particular activity let's say if i simply add some buttons there right this is the button we got the text view you can also add some images as well right let's go with avatar and we got some basic values out there right the alignment part the background the foreground the image this box will contain the label of this button and all other different things were stored under this resources folder right and the layout for all these view elements we call them view elements this is a view element this is also another view element and this is also another view element right the layout for all those view elements will be stored under your layout folder after this layout we got the mip map folder your mip map folder was mainly used for your icons like what icon your application is gonna use right we have different quality different pixels you can see like this one is here we got another one we got another one for different other quality and different other resolutions you can say right so all these basic icons will be available here for different rounded and your straight corners were also there done so your mip map folder will contain your icons other than this part we got the basic values which simply store your color codings and your main strings part like all the string values that you have declared that you have used inside your application like the name we have used as my application or you can say the app name is the variable and it stores the value my application right so the value will be or the string value will be stored under your strings dot xml file right when you simply compile the application all these three main folders manifest java and resources will be compiled and packed into an archive with help of a gradle script out there right and this gradle script always help you to build an application so these are the three major folders manifest java and your resources after these major folder now let's go with the components if i go with major components all the applications consist of four major components out let me close all other values here so to explain those components let's go with the basic application here so i'm using this android device right whenever you execute whenever you open any application let's go with the common one or this dialer right this is the most common application in all the devices the mobile phone dialer right the view or the gui you get here the graphical user interface through which a user interact right this particular gui part is known as an activity like all the elements were placed inside this activity you can add different elements out there like the scroll view like the switch part whatever you want you can add it here normal right these different elements were known as view elements right and the place or the container where you arrange or where you place those elements is known as an activity so the complete gui part was always available under your activities after these activities we got the second major component as your content provider like if you want to use any kind of database under your application or with your application right you generally use your content providers content providers were mainly responsible to handle your database queries or to like process any query for your database after content provider we got the basic services services were generally known for your background process let's say you are using some browser right if i go with my browser here so let's go with the browser and let's say i want to download some file here so just the browser and just search here for kali.org we got the web page here just go with downloads so let's go with the bare metal 
and let's go with 64 bit installer and let's click on download when you simply click on download here this particular download part is the background process that was initialized by the Firefox all this background process started by an application but generally known as services other than this service these background processes we got fourth major component let me just note down those components first so the four major components were the first one was your activity which was again gives you the GUI right the second part was your content provider that again helps you to query your database your third one is your services that were again the background process or you can say application background process right and the last one and the fourth one was your broadcast receiver let's go with a simple example whenever you receive a message you always get a notification and sometimes your application will automatically fetch the OTP from that message the simple point is how your application came to know that the message has been arrived the simple answer is whenever your device receives an SMS it always broadcast a message that this particular message has been arrived if your application has subscribed for that particular broadcast then it will accept or it will receive that broadcast and from that broadcasted message it can easily extract that OTP so broadcast receivers were mainly used for interprocess communication and for message broadcasting as well to broadcast or to share a message or whenever you receive a call right sometimes your game gets stops your video gets stops how your application knows that a phone has been arrived because of your simple broadcasting part these are the four major components that are available in all of your Android application your activity for the GUI your content provider for the database part your services for your background process and your broadcast receiver to broadcast a message or to receive a message after this part the most important thing about any of your Android application depending on what Android version you are using your Android use different permission list like if I go with this one I'm using this Android version 10 here let's create one more device and use Android version 6 or something let's say let's go with Jenny motion or let's add a device so I'll go with Android version 6 this time just to show you the gap like version 10 and version 6 right I'll go with S7 next and install in the meantime like when it's installing just minimize and let's go with the basic terminal here I'm using Windows terminal and let's go with ADB devices one device was connected through the USB debugging so just go with ADB shell PM for the package management part list to list all the values and what I want to list I want to list all the permissions so right now I'm using Android version 10 so if I just get a list copy it and open notepad and paste them they were around like 529 permissions which were available inside this Android emulator your if you are using a physical device you will get a much longer list of all those permissions under emulator the list was a bit shorter but if you are using the physical device your list will be around like 1000 or like 1500 as well because your physical device has more permission as compared to those emulators because they don't have some drivers some hardware and all other different things were also not available in the emulator so that's why we have some less permissions there so these were the permissions for your Android version 10 done so if I go with the different version let's go with Android version 6 here and the IP address for 6 was 1.106 so let's call this one if I simply go with the basic command like adb devices I get two devices this time because both emulators were connected to my machine so I'll call this particular emulator right I'll go with simple adb I'll go with hyphen s to specify like on which device I want to execute this command because we have two different devices this time here 
right so we need to specify and to specify we are using hyphen s here just go with hyphen s enter the ip address and the port and then go with the same command package manager list and go with permissions okay we forgot the shell here this time if i copy these permissions all right so this is the command that i have executed right and from here we get the list of permissions so just again open another notepad and if i paste them you can see i only have 306 permissions available under my emulator so we have different permission sets permission list under your different android versions right right now just close all these notepads for once and close all those emulators as well and now i'm going to connect my android device my physical android device here just to show you like how many permissions were there but before that i'm going to do the same steps i need to enable the developer options and then i will go with the usb debugging right after usb debugging i will simply connect my android device to my desktop here my device was connected right now go with the basic cmd and if i go with simple clear command and i go with simple adv devices and now you can see my device name was this one if i go with the again exact same command adv shell pm list permissions and hit enter device unauthorized let me just allow this first now execute the same command and done we got the list of permissions let's just check how many permissions were there i'm using my android version 11 right now right so if i just paste all those here you can see i got some 1730 permission under my android version 11 and just because it's a physical device we got a much larger list of permissions here so again the permission list depends on your device as well on your emulator you will get a much smaller list of permissions but the most important part all those permissions were grouped here let's say we know like for all the applications there was a user and for all those applications we also have some virtual machines as well so whenever your application asks for the permission your android will simply add that application inside the permission group for the permission group list just go with simple same command adv shell pm list permission hyphen group spelling mistakes so these are the major permission groups that were available in your android devices and these are your groups out there android will only ask you for these permissions let's say whenever your application wants some permission for your sms it will ask you like you want to grant the permission or you want to deny right if you grant your user application will be added into your permission group if you simply deny that then your application user will not be added into this group and if your application user is not inside this group it cannot perform any action for this particular group similar pattern was applied here for different permission and they were also known as your dangerous group right because not all the permissions were grouped here not all of them right they were mainly known as your dangerous permission through which your data can be linked some common permission like if i talk about the internet if your application wants to access your internet for that part your android will never prompt you like this particular application want to use internet they never prompt you because this is not a dangerous permission this was generally known as a normal permission but permission like storage location sensors your like activity recognition camera call logs calendar phone contacts these were mainly known as your dangerous permissions so there are two major types of permissions first one was your normal permissions and second one was your dangerous permissions so under this normal permission part we got this permission where your android will not prompt you to allow or deny it will simply allow that permission under dangerous your android will always prompt you either you want to allow or you want to deny that permission it's on you this was the basic application architecture have a good day and stay connected